All right, so this is a pretty long question. Let me uh, start by reading it and see um, what I can do. So it says, antiproton is an antiparticle of proton, right? Which has the same mass as proton. So let me just, I uh, um, guess they want me to use the symbol uh, M uh, for masses. So we'll just uh, be using mass M. But its other properties and electrons are exactly opposite. To create the antiproton is to bombard the protons at rest. Right, so it would be a situation where you have a proton at rest. There's a proton coming with some beam energy. And after the collision, what you're going to have is, um, you will have basically the original two protons, more or less. And then um, there is enough energy to create uh, um, create two additional particles in uh, proton, antiproton, anti uh, the pairs. So um, after collision, you'll have those. That's all uh, moving together. Uh, in the lowest energy setting, it'll be moving together. Uh, so that that would be related to the threshold kinetic energy. So yeah. In the left frame, <laughs> not all the kinetic energy can be turned into rest energy because the total momentum needs to be conserved, right? In the center of momentum reference frame, so here we are thinking of a picture where I have two proton beams coming in and I arrange them to come together with, I guess V is the symbol I'm using. So come together with the same speed and after collision, what you're going to have is the two original protons and the two pair uh, of a pair of particles that have been created in particle-antiparticle pair. Um, where, yeah, all the kinetic energy can be turned into rest energy in the center of momentum reference frame. Yeah, equal to mc squared. Of, oh, yeah, find. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so I think it's simple enough. So the equation I would have set up is, uh, so I want the relativistic energy of my uh, single particle to be, so gamma mc squared, to be such that, that it's double the rest energy, 2mc squared. So that in the total energy of a single particle, there's enough energy to create one other particle like it. So, um, so this actually gives a gamma factor. Gamma is 2. Then um, I have these formulas memorized. Um, so first of all, the definitions of these uh, um, variables. So beta is defined as basically speed measured in speed of light uh, 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 units. And in terms of beta, gamma is 1 over square root of 1 minus beta squared. And this is something I learned only after teaching special relativity for a few semesters, which is just how useful this relationship inverted is. When you solve it for beta, you get this. Beta is equal to square root of 1 minus 1 over gamma squared. And uh, it's testament of usefulness. It's, I have it memorized. I hate memorizing anything, but I have this formula memorized because it's so useful. So if we know gamma, then we know beta. Beta is going to be equal to square root of 1 minus 1 over 2 squared. Um, so we'll plug in that number. Uh, let's uh, plug it in as we go, just so that I can be sure that I didn't make any mistakes. Uh, I, let me bring up my... Calculator, forgot to have it at the right place. And I'll, I have a suspicion the that entry isn't set up to allow for um, either, like this kind of expression. So I'll just uh, work out that expression here. Exact Start answer. One minus one. Uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think it did it ask for, it didn't ask for exact answer, right? It, yeah, normally the menu will pop up uh, if it lasts for. Yeah. Let me. Uh, I can check it too to see if it. Yeah, lasts. It, it wants a decimal approximation. Yeah. So I have that small approximation here. Oh, you know what? That's a number I actually have memorized. I could have just done. Well, square root of one half. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's oh, one fourth. Zero square root of three. Uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. One but minus this one is, fourth. Um, it's a useful for examples because it gives gamma factor of two. <laughs> okay. 
so okay so let's keep going so that is the um so speed given by square root of one minus one over two squared so in the center of mo momentum frame it's uh, super simple that's the answer so what the rest of the question parts are going to have us do is do a Lorentz transformation on this setting to get what we should see in the left frame. So given this speed, what is the energy and x component of momentum? Oh, yeah, I already did that. So let me just write it down so that we have it. Um, we already worked out that its energy should be 2 mc squared and its momentum. It should be, uh, so this should be gamma um, and beta c, so gamma times beta. So let me just uh, do that calculation quickly here. Uh, the previous output times uh, gamma, which is 2. So 1.732. Oh, yeah, I could have done that in my head. Why do I keep not doing it? Let me just make three. sure that's what we should have. Um, Two and one point seven three two. Yeah, in oh we uh, uh in the negative x direction, right? <laughs> minus <laughs> one point seven three two. Um, okay, so in the center of mass frame again, quite simple. So now c is where the magic happens so with these answers we have uh, basically the energy momentum four vector uh, or you know e divided by c momentum that's the energy momentum four vector and to find these you use lorentz transformation it looks like this so when we talk about lorentz transformation uh, when we are talking about coordinates uh, for example so one way you can represent the Lorentz transformation is by matrix multiplication. So if you have a time coordinate CT and you have the X position coordinate, and I'm just going to ignore uh, Y and Z coordinates because nothing interesting happens there. The Lorentz transformation you've seen in your textbook and elsewhere, uh, you are trying to get CT prime and X prime. You can represent it as this uh, column vector times left multiplied to this uh, square matrix gamma minus gamma beta minus gamma beta gamma assuming you are uh, transforming from um, from a frame s that looks like uh, you know frame s at rest and your frame s prime is the one moving to right at speed beta c and let's see if that's the picture we have here. So uh, we have these two particles coming towards each other, and we are looking at the uh, energy momentum of this particle. We want that to uh, become. Oh, wait, wait, no, no, no. That's not the one that we want uh, it to be at rest. It's this particle that we want to be at rest uh, because we are still tracking the particle that's moving to left. That's the one we want it to be moving when we are in the left frame. So yeah, the reference frame uh, in which this is at rest is the S prime frame where it's moving at speed beta C. Same beta as what we calculated above. So, so yeah, so what we needed to do here is to express our energy momentum four vector in frame S. So E over C, my X component of momentum, times the Lorentz boost. So the Lorentz boost would be the, um, so because of this special setup where we are trying to relate to back to the lab frame where one of the particles is at rest. So for this to be consistent, actually, you have to kind of turn this around. Can I do fully across? Uh, so really it's this picture that we are trying to relate to <laughs> where the target particle is the particle on the left that's at rest and the incoming particles particle on the right that's moving to left so that's the picture we are trying to relate to so in order to go from the center of mass frame to that frame 
the low end boost is the speed at which the particles were moving in the center of mass frame. That's why I'm using the same data. So here, uh, so it will be same gamma minus gamma beta minus gamma beta and gamma. So when you do this matrix multiplication, this is uh, what you end up with. Let me write it on the left hand side of that. You get for the first element, gamma times that plus this times that. So gamma E over C minus gamma beta uh, PX. And for the second row, I get minus gamma beta times that. So minus gamma beta E over C um, plus gamma times uh, momentum. So yeah, let's do the calculation. So after I've done the calculation, I have to make sure to interpret what I get here as being my uh, E prime divided by C. And the, frankly, when I do the numerical calculation, I can kind of ignore all of that because factors of C will just work themselves out. So um, I can just uh, take my answer here, which was the um, um, so by so let's do this calculation here. So um, I'm gonna do it this way. Let me declare all the variables: gamma, e, and um, beta, and px. And for this calculation, I'm just gonna ignore all the c's. C is equal to one. Um, let me write down this expression, gamma times E minus gamma times beta times Px. So I can take that and substitute in all the quantities. My gamma is equal to 2, my E is equal to 2, my beta is equal to 1.732, wait, no, my beta is equal to 0 0.866, and my px is equal to 1.732. So, yeah, I get, wait, something's wrong. Um, oh, oh, sorry. My px is not this. <laughs> I keep forgetting about the minus sign. So, you know, the question was actually trying to help you so that you don't have, to, you can do more uh, familiar uh, Lorentz transformation instead of something moving in the minus x direction. So, yes, have the correct sign. Okay. So, my energy is a 6.99 or 7, more or less, within some precision. And my momentum is, let's uh, plug in the same expression, uh, minus gamma times beta times E, again, my C's are one, so I'm gonna ignore it, plus gamma times PX. And I'm going to use the same substitution expression. Uh, yeah, minus 6.928. And uh, you will notice that these are getting close to each other, the uh, faster a particle is. In the limit where they are basically equal to each other is what we call ultra relativistic approximation. We're not quite there yet, um, but yeah, so seven and minus 6.928. I, I like this question because it's a uh, kind of elegant um, and it, it, the only advanced concept it uses is the fact that energy momentum for vector transforms under Lorentz transformation, like, uh, or, you know, what it's saying here. Um, so, okay, part D. Using your answer to C above, answer this question. How much kinetic energy does the high energy proton needs to have in the left frame in order to produce the antiprotons? Oh, that's easy. I can take that. Subtract one. I think I can do the calculation in my head. Let's see. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so now if you weren't worried about conserving momentum, you might have thought three mc squared would be enough, you know, enough energy to produce two particles. 
but because you need to conserve for momentum, uh, you need to double that. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Yeah. Okay. I think, yeah. In the lecture, I gave uh, some example of uh, trying to compare the LHC collider collisions with uh, collisions with the cosmic rays. Um, yes. Okay.